Hello guys and gals, this is going to be another episode of Fables of Leonardo da Vinci, but it's going to be an analysis. Now, I forgot that I, that I wanted to um, include an analysis after each episode, so this is going to be um, an analysis of each of the poem, the, the fables rather, that we've already covered. And um, if you want to actually see those, I'm going to see if I can find those and link those in the description actually. Um, you'll have to excuse the, uh, window banging against the house. Um, it's really, really windy here, and my window is broken. Not really broken, but the pins have broken off that actually hold the window in place, so anytime it's windy, then it bangs against the house. And it has for a very long time. Now then, um, again, these are all opinions. Um, so, um... Maybe these um, fables mean something different to other people, and sometimes the fable will actually give give a lesson or a moral. But um, sometimes I can find a deeper meaning to some of these. And we're going to get rid of analysis here. That's just so that I know what the video is. You know when I upload it. Anyways, um, the very first one was actually what I feel was one of the most... Um, most profound, actually. Okay, well, there is the woodlark. That was the second one we did. Uh, oh, the paper and the ink. This is the one. You see, this is just a few sentences. And, um, again, we're going to not exactly read all the way through it, but I will give a short um, synopsis of what it's like. I'm going to move this closer so I can hold it with my foot there. Anyways, um, I just have to do something really quick. Um... Uh, yeah. Anyways, I'm sorry. I'm a little bit distracted. Anyways, we will, um, do this. Yeah. Now, in the paper and the ink, it's basically about a plain white piece of paper that, um, gets written on in, in, in black ink. It could be any color ink. It could be any color of paper. It is said that it was pure, this was white paper with black ink. It could be black paper with white ink. It doesn't really matter. I'm not making any kind of, um, I don't, none of this was even anything about any sort of racial stereotypes or anything. But, um, basically it's just this piece of paper, completely blank, gets written on, and then it starts complaining because it's all marred up now and, and written on. But, um, then somebody comes along, finds the, the blank pieces of paper and throws them into the fire, but sees that one of the pieces of paper has writing on it, so it gets saved. Anyways. <coughs> to me... This is one of the most profound um, fables that I've come across yet. But I've only read um, five, I believe, of these. And um, what this actually means, at least in my mind, is how life experiences sometimes leave scars. I mean, you know, you cut yourself, it'll leave a scar, and then you'll, then you'll see, say, oh, I remember when that happened, you know. And basically they say that anything that doesn't kill you makes you stronger. So anyways... Uh, Something else is um, that when you break a bone, it's supposed to grow back even stronger than before, you know. I think that's true anyways. But um, basically, to me, this is um, the white paper is actually people and the ink being, you know, trials. Things that um, basically we don't like at the time, but make us stronger in the long run. Um, an example of this would probably be the COVID-19 virus. I mean, that's basically everywhere. I mean, information about it and about all the news about it, about everybody that's infected, about people who have died from it. And um, basically surviving such a thing, such an ordeal, basically would make somebody stronger in the long run. And um, I'm going to put another little fable here. It's um, basically... Uh, if you're into um, or know anything about um, metallurgy, blacksmithing, anything like that, um, this is, or even um, what's it called, jewel crafting, anything like that, when people um, basically in the process of actually purifying gold, um, they put like you know lumps of gold 
into a pot and they heat it up. I mean, basically the thing, the, um, the lumps of gold being the people, you know, people and, um, the heat being, you know, trials of life. And as that gets hotter, I mean, that isn't pleasant for anybody. They, then, um, all the impurities, they float to the top and somebody comes along, scoops, scoops them off the top, you know, all the impurities. So the gold gets more, more and more pure, the longer the heat is on. And so that's just another example of how basically, uh, life's trials, which aren't fun and by any stretch of the imagination, basically make a person stronger in the long run. Um, I even go so far as to make another example as, um, pearls, you know, everybody loves pearls, you know, pearl necklaces like Marge Simpson has, you know, and stuff like that. But, um, pearls actually start out as a grain of sand in a, um, is it an oyster? I think it's an oyster in an oyster's mouth. Well, basically an oyster is a huge mouth, but a grain of sand will get in there and irritate the oyster and it will keep putting this, um, layer of, um, pearl around this grain of sand. And the longer that, that that goes on, the bigger the pearl gets. And again, the oyster is people. And then the little, that little grain of sand is, um, basically the trials of life and the pressure that, um, that those put on us, but something beautiful comes out of it because there's this pearl. And a final example would be, um, diamonds. I mean, diamonds are basically coal, but under such pressure that, um, I mean, diamonds are probably one of the most valuable substances on earth. And it just started out as this black, dirty, rolled rock. I mean, that someone would just probably just throw on the fire anyways to like heat their house. But instead of doing that, a diamond was put under such pressure that, um, it turned out to be something beautiful. Anyways, again, I'm not making any kind of color analogy here. I'm just, um, saying that coal is black it's always black and that pressure makes it beautiful and i know i'm spending way too much time on just this simple this first one but um to me this this really speaks volumes to me this um this this fable here and i'm not sure if it was actually intended you know to symbolize you know life struggles and how they make everybody stronger you know surviving life struggles as to a person's dignity, character, and, um, strength. But, um, to me, that's what it means. And again, these are opinions. And if you don't agree, that's fine. I mean, it'd be kind of annoying if everybody liked the same thing. Cause you go to the store, let's say everybody liked chocolate ice cream and you like chocolate ice cream and you went to the store, there wasn't any chocolate ice cream cause everybody already ate it, you know? So everybody liking the same thing would really be annoying. It's good that everybody's unique. Anyways, we're going to move on to the next one. I forget exactly what the original intention of this one was. Uh, something about um, the thoughts of man being important or something. And be, being given worth by being written down on a piece of paper. But anyways, the woodlark. Now this one basically... Um, I don't really have anything extra to add to this. Basically, this is a story about an emperor or a king. And... Um, he was sick or taken ill, and so there was this nameless hermit or something who was called in by this um, by the people who um, worked for this king or emperor or something like that, and um, so he he had this woodlark or this woodlark would follow him around this this hermit this nameless hermit, and the woodlark flew in and look you know was looking at this um this emperor or king or whatever, this guy who had like lots of power. And, um, so the hermit said, well, the king is going to be just fine. And so they're like, oh, okay, well, that's fine. Um, you can go. And so anyways, in time, the king did improve. And so they went to see the, the hermit to thank him. And he's like, oh, don't thank me. Thank the woodlark, which is this bird thing, I guess. And he said that basically the woodlark had the woodlark looked away, the king would, would have died, but, or, but since the, the, since the woodlark was looking at the king and then he knew everything was going to be okay. And he didn't exactly take credit for, you know, curing the king or anything. And to me, that speaks to modesty and, um, you know, not taking credit where taking somebody else's credit. 
but it says here, um, true love can be seen in adversity. It is like a light which shines the brightest when the night is darkest, which is similar to the last one, I think. A point I was trying to get across in the last one. How sometimes the darkest times can bring about, you know, the most transformative experience. Um, the snow... This one was really short, basically about a snowflake, and um, basically it tumbled down and formed a huge avalanche. Um, this fable is for the humble, for they shall be exalted, which basically is also biblical. But it says, let's see, uh, there was a rock, and on top of the rock was once a, once a flake of snow. Um, it was really an insightful one. Again, I'm going to have these in the description. These, um, so you can, where I actually read these. Right now, I'm just trying to touch on the actual, um, meanings, maybe further meanings. This is analysis. I will be including an analysis in future, uh, in future ones. And I do love this picture. A lot right here of the uh, magpie and the fox. This one is basically simple: the, the fox and the magpie. Um, basically, the fox noticed that the magpies were pecking the the dead animals, so he pretended to be dead and opened his mouth. So the magpie started pecking the fox's tongue. So he, so he just ate the magpie. Yeah. Basically, it's about um, not being naive, I believe. Um, and I'm about being cautious about something that seems too good to be true. From the magpie's perspective, you know, finding a dead fox, he's like, oh, we're all a dead fox. And um, it was too good to be true, and um, it paid the price. Um, the magpie paid the price, rather. And the fox got a meal. Anyways, um, it, so basically, as far as I know, this means um, if something is too good to be true, then it probably is. And lastly, we have the, the spider and the keyhole. I think that's the last one anyways. I'm going to go one page over. Yes. The fox... I mean, fox. The spider in the keyhole. Now, this one... This one went a little bit differently than I thought. When I was reading it, I figured... I thought something different was going to happen. But anyways, this is basically about a spider that actually discovers a keyhole and thinking that, hey... It would be a nice, it would be a safe place because um, the keyhole itself was made of iron and it, there was all these benefits to it. But what the, fi what the spider failed to realize was that um, the keyhole wasn't meant for him. And um, then when the key came along, it pushed him out. I figured that would probably crush him, but it says it just pushed him out. So it didn't, it didn't kill him. Thankfully, it wasn't macabre. Anyways, to me... Um, this is basically about knowing your place, I suppose. Um, the spider ended up with all these lofty dreams about, well, being, you know, perfectly safe from, you know, all harm. While being inside this keyhole where he wasn't really meant to be. Um, he thought of, you know, all of, of getting all the benefits of, like, putting spider webs up here to catch these insects and putting spider webs up over here. He had all these big dreams, but, um, Maybe he was dreaming or shooting too big, aiming too high. I don't really know. Uh, this one I didn't really think about too too much, but um, I I find all of these um, fables to be amazing because um, they come from such someone that has such a high intellect. Um, Leonardo da Vinci is world renowned for his insight because he was an inventor and. I'm not sure if we actually use any of his inventions today, but really his observations were amazing. But yeah, I'm not sure exactly. I'm going to need to analyze this one some more because I'm, I mean, basically I really wanted to focus on the first one, um, the paper and the ink. Anyways, in our next one, when I actually pick this series up again, we will do the goldfinch. 
the peach tree, the lioness. Both of those are really short. So, um, and uh, the swan. So we'll be doing four in the next one. And that's that. I hope everybody found at least this a little bit enlightening. Um, if so, then, um, well, then I've done my job. I like making these videos because they're fun for me to make. I enjoy reading fables, especially by a brilliant intellect of, by someone of brilliant intellect like Leonardo da Vinci. And this was a, basically a free book. And when I say a free book, it means that they had left it outside at the library on the free rack that they leave out. And I thought, you know, it would be cool to read these. And it said, and there are 73 right here, 73 fables by great artists, beautifully, beautifully illustrated in color. And um, so, yeah, and that will do it. If you like this video, make sure you hit like. Um, I have a wide variety of, of content on my channel. I do want to eventually transition to more of a gaming, a gaming channel. This started out as a Pokemon card opening channel. And um, so, yeah, I, I appreciate all the support. Um, this is my income, my, um, my profession. But I, ma I basically make videos because I enjoy it, not because I want any financial gain. And as such, I will say that that will do it for this video. I do intend to continue this until we read every single fable in this book, and there are a lot. As I said, there are 73, uh, meaning there will be 64, 64 left after the next chapter. If we read four, if we read four next time, and we will an analyze those four, and um, that's the plan. Anyways, thanks for watching, everybody, and have a great day.